welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Today's a bit different because I'm going to do an unboxing. I don't do these very often, but this is a gun I have been looking forward to reviewing for quite some time. It arrived about an hour ago, I haven't opened it yet. I think there's going to be some fast forward because I've got to dig it out of its casing. I've tested a lot of its peers, some of them I liked, some of them I didn't like. This one, I suspect, might be the one to uh, to win the ball game for its specific marketing use. So, let's see how we get on with it. Because I think I've already messed up because I didn't put my knife in my pocket. Yes, I did. Right, let's go. Now, I'll give you a couple of clues because the Rimfire Tactical Market and Rimfire Long Range Market is one that has been very popular over the last 12 months. It's definitely a growing trend and I'm pleased to see a lot of manufacturers pursuing it and combining some of their long range and centrefire gear with Rimfire actions and barrels to make it all work out for the shooter. Now this one I think I'm going to like the most because it is the CZ457 long range rimfire with a very nice stock. Now I haven't used the stock, I haven't handled the gun, I haven't anything. All I've done is look at visual cues, photos and comparisons with other rifles in the same market and thought, hmm. That ticks that box, that ticks that box, that ticks that box, because its competitors perhaps haven't. Let's see how it looks in the flesh. My reaction may be indicative of my thoughts. What's in the box to start with then? That looks like some kind of blanking plate for the magazine or some other fitment. And this is the bolt. I have reviewed a 457 before, it was the Royal, which is the more traditional um, more traditional rimfire hunting rifle in the in the walnut stock, uh, hogsback walnut stock was it, or was it, no it wasn't quite hogsback, but this is the bolt, so the bolt's got a rubberized handle on it and it's all sort of faceted like a, like a jeweled, uh, like a jewel, that'll be going in in a second, the gun is in a black bag. Well, I like what I see so far. Nice colour, nice texture. And that is it. So, let's just put that back there. Let's put the bolt in the rifle. The catch on the left. Has that bolt got decocked, perhaps? Yes, the bolt has got decocked from shipping. So there we are. Right, let's get rid of this box. That is it. CZ457 long range rim fire. And I like what I see. So, front to back, what have we got? We've got, this is the 20 inch version, heavy fluted barrel. It's got a break on it, which certainly is a little bit more than finger tight but I suspect that will remove and I can put a moderator on if I want. I think for the UK market that's going to be quite uh, important. Nice looking barrel, 457 action is the modern update to the 455, um, which has been a kind of slow growth over the 452, they had a 453 and a few tweaks, but the 457 was a big shift in the manufacturing. Um, it's got a Picatinny, a Picatinny rail included, the barrels do swap on these actions, uh, it's a stock removal job though, but that does, it is what it is. Bolt travel is lovely and short, and that bolt handle there, it's probably got about a 70 degree lift on it, I'll have to check up on that one. The Picatinny rail is long, and it's a 25 MOA rail, which is ideal for rim fires, especially if you've got a long range scope on that will handle it for zero, because that's going to allow a lot of dialing capacity. 
I've shot rim fires as far as 300 meters regularly, and you do need to make some tweak, some tweaks to get them to do it. Uh, the magazine system sees as standard fitting. Five rounders supplied. Ten rounders will be available, of course. Let's have a go with the trigger. It's quite nice. Single stage. I'll weigh it later. That's probably breaking about 750, 800 grams, maybe. Safety catch on the side, bolt operation is fully allowed to be catch in safe. And then moving back here, we've got an adjustable cheek piece. How it adjusts yet, I'm not fully sure. I think the stock, I think the recoil pad's adjustable as well. It's got quite a spacious recoil pad on it, nice and big. It's, th it's thin, but it's firm. And that will lock in for shoulder. And just from my initial look down the rifle, that cheek piece is a nice shape, but I just need to check out and see how it will adjust upwards. It's got a vertical pistol grip on it, stippling, and there's a, there's a slight rubbery texture to the finish. The stippling is its quite grippy, it's quite a, f a hand filling grip. It is ambidextrous, the gun is entirely ambidextrous other than the bolt. I wouldn't say it was the most comfortable grip I've ever got hold on. It's, it's a little bit full at the top here, but thumb on top, it's, it's, it's very nice. And of course, these days, thumb on top is probably the most popular. A lot of people are using a thumb shelf here because they've kind of got a floating thumb anyway. So it doesn't actually matter. All I need to do is figure out how this cheek piece adjusts. There will no doubt be um, a clue somewhere, but I can't see any kind of, any kind of button or catch but that will be for further investigation. But the, the recoil pad definitely goes up and down. We've got flush cup swing, sling swivels uh, on either side at the back end, two studs at the front, which will take a bipod. That barrel is spaciously fully floating, and if I grip it and do that to it, I've got to squeeze that very hard to get it to contact. So that's gonna be a good, good one there. That is stiff, spacious, you're going to get excellent bipod fit on here because again the stippling's on the underside as well as the walls for grip. Yes, first impressions are very good. Like this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell and if you really want, click on the link and go to Patreon because it would be very much appreciated if anybody who likes my films wants to um, assist me slightly in the financial element of making them because rifle reviewing is my job. Stick with me. This is going to get a scope on this afternoon when I'm back in the workshop and hopefully I'll be shooting this before the end of the week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.